What's going on? What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? Um, so, I want to let you guys know, I, obviously, you know, if you know me, you know that I have some pretty expensive taste, okay? Um, I have right here an incredible amount of caviar, all right? Mmm. Oh my god. Politics of the industry and when <laughs> uh, and when they think that I'm stupid and, and they did this to me the year that I went to rehab and I lost my dad. How horrible is that? They did it when they knew that I had no idea what was going on with music. I had and they were taking advantage of me. They released a song, Sony Records, when I was in rehab in December. Don't say goodbye was released. And they were so stupid at it that they were like purposely trying to like ruin the relationship that Sony Records released Don't Say Goodbye with just the instrumental. Actually the TV track. Which means there's no verses and just the hooks are there. That's what they did to me. Like, that's not okay. And I will not let that go by the wayside at all. But it's not gonna work, fellas. This is exactly why Michael Jackson told me not to sign with you. Um, two, I'm going to sue you guys. I'm going to sue Steve Zapp. Steve Zapp, you can be prepared for a lawsuit. Okay? Um, Sony Records, you can be ready for a lawsuit. Uh, you have me blocked in every single country in the world on my love album that I produced and wrote. And y'all wasting your time. Can cancel them. Dude, no one cares about your music. Dude, no one cares about what you have to say. They care about what I have to say. That's why they're here. Um, that's why you're gone now. Poof, be gone. And people, when y'all do that, I can't afford a guard. Yeah, like I can't afford a $15,000 Rolex. And $35,000 around my neck and a Bentley. All right, here we go. I've always had to see what it looks like, you know what I mean? I just... Oh, thank you so much, family, familia. Why? Because it's my life and my choices. What gives, what gives fans the right to, to tell us what to do? You can't tell us what to do. Mama tell me, don't you ever trust me. Mom told me, don't you ever trust him. I was lonely, you know, ever trust him. I was lonely, don't you ever trust him. Oh, yeah. Yo, um, shout out to Yodi. Uh, I'm on my way to Yodi. Heading out to Florida. It's gonna be a great trip. Everybody, whatever you doing, happy Halloween. See all y'all you, all here. Um, LMG Philanthropy. Love you, bro. Thank you for standing up for the movement. Um, anyway, I'm just saying all, all of my people, hello. Everyone, stay healthy, happy, positive. Love, light, and blessings. Um, that's about it. You know? um, and when I say fool, I don't mean like fool, you know what I mean? Like, I mean like, my brother, that's, 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 how, that's how we talk about it. Uh, Following developing news tonight in Lancaster, where pop star Aaron Carter has died at the age of 34. Yeah, the troubled performer grew up in the limelight, but he was in and out of rehab several times in his short life. Chris Wolf is live for us in Lancaster. He's got more on this. Chris? Yeah, Rick, MB, the street is now cleared. People have been moving in and out of that home behind me all day. And tonight we heard from some of those closest to Aaron Carter, and they all say the same thing. They all share stories of a very kind, loving, caring, humble, yet troubled young man.
It's the tragic death of a young performer, and now family, friends, and fans around the world are suffering the loss. Singer, rapper, actor Aaron Carter is dead at the age of 34. Carter's close friend and stylist shared this video of a recent birthday celebration for Carter's fiance, Melanie Martin. She is also the mother of their 11-month-old son, Prince. It's very painful, very, very painful. I talked to him two weeks ago. He was at the dentist, and he FaceTimed me. He said, come over, and I said, I can't have I have work to do. I wish I could have just go see him at least one more time. L.A. County firefighters say they received a call about a drowning. The L.A. County Sheriff's Department says a house sitter called 911 around 11 a.m. Saturday to report a man unresponsive in his bathtub. It was Carter. The dispatcher advised her to start CPR until deputies and paramedics arrived. Then emergency personnel pronounced Aaron Carter dead at the scene. He had been grappling with substance abuse for years, in and out of rehab. He once appeared on the show The Doctors, explaining he suffered from a number of mental health issues and was taking a variety of prescription pills to treat those conditions. He was a good person. You know, he had his demons, as we all do, you know. Um, I just wish he had another chance to... Uh, defeat those demons, I'll say. Carter began performing as a child and had hit albums starting in his teenage years. He is the younger brother of Nick Carter of the Backstreet Boys and performed as an opening act for Britney Spears as well as his brother's boy band and also appeared on the reality TV series House of Carters. <laughs> Fiance Melanie Martin, social media influencer and model, arrived at the home to talk with investigators and seemed inconsolable. All right, take a look at this. Aaron Carter's public relations firm released a statement, quote, the family has been notified and will be flying out to Los Angeles. Aaron worked very hard towards the end of his life in recovery to be a good father and to make amends with his family. Sadly, the Carters lost another sibling, 25-year-old Leslie Carter, to a prescription drug overdose 10 years ago, back in 2012. It's a soul that was searching to find relevance in life. He tried many paths, many substances to put in his body to try to find fulfillment, but they were all temporary remedies. And there's still a void that was left in his soul that wasn't able to be filled. And you hear a part in the interview where one lady in particular states that Aaron Carter had demons that he wasn't able to control and that we all have demons in us. Well, that's not a true statement. But what the woman fails to mention is that there's a tug of war, so to speak, from flesh to spirit between what is right and what is wrong. And that's in everyone because God puts it in every human being, a type of understanding of what is right and what is wrong, a conscience. And when that conscience is overridden and the flesh takes full control then people will find themselves in very dire situations fatal at times the Bible tells us in Galatians 5 that there's a war between the flesh and the spirit between good and evil between a beastly human nature and a spiritual nature that is striving to do the things that are morally correct and right. And that is what was taking place with Aaron Carter. He was trying to overcome the fight of the flesh, uh, the desire to do evil, the desire to engage in substance abuse uh, with what was morally correct in terms of abstaining from those things that were harmful to his body and to his soul. There was a fight. There is no form of intoxication or temporary pleasure that is worth a person's soul. People need to evaluate their lives. People need to consider that this life is not the end all. 
something is going to take place when you cross over to the next realm and the Bible is very clear as to what is going to take place Jesus Christ the Son of God said some shall rise to everlasting life and others shall rise to everlasting damnation there is no middle ground there is no gray area there is no purgatory let that sink in listener let that sink in is that cigarette stick worth it is that marijuana joint worth it is that pipe worth it is that needle worth it many of you have Bibles and you can read what I'm telling you the Bible says the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord we're all not going to rest in peace. Doesn't matter what type of condolences you hear at the funeral coming from the priest's mouth, giving the eulogy. We're all not going to rest in peace. Don't be deceived. The ones who are going to abide in peace are the children of God, those who have been born of water and of the Spirit, who've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and received the Holy Ghost. They believe the gospel. They believe the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They're abiding in Jesus Christ. They're living for God. They understand that the temptations will come in life. The desire to do these um, uh, control substances to get intoxicated but they're at a war between the flesh and the spirit so they are leaning upon God and they are resisting the temptations they understand there's a spiritual war that needs to be fought a war for their soul and Jesus Christ is on one side and Satan is on the other it's time to make amends with God understand what is seeking your soul that's like a heat seeking missile there's a target on your soul and Satan's job is to steal kill and destroy